All right, so instead of this coil, which uh, was about three and a half megahertz, got this guy on there now, but I didn't really want to change around my uh, shunt capacitors down there, so I was just really just playing with the primary. So for this particular coil, uh, a little over four megahertz, I had to use a single turn that length of wire right there. So so it's running at about four point two. All right, so it's about 26 volts right now. I'm going to cut it on there. And let's see. I'm going to tune it a little better. So I'll get it fairly well in tune. Um, again, it's about 4.2, something like that. So it's pulling about 4 amps with that single primary turn. If I cut it all the way to, uh, say, 30 volts or so, then about like that, starts running pretty good. Again, 4 amps, pulls more, uh, more current than the last setup, the single turn again, but that's the four megahertz discharge which really you know it's not a big difference than what I was running earlier um, you know about the same but uh yeah it's pretty cool so something like that that's how I might tune it a little closer to four Pulling it down to like a couple amps, pulling that uh, arc. That's not bad. So that's a six, you know, sixty watts or so. course then that brings it up to <laughs> about 120 but uh yeah not bad I can't visually see much of a difference between three and a half and four um really I should just go to six or seven something like that right which might be what I try to do but again I'm not really sure I could get away with that with this gate driver so honestly I might just go back to the tiny three and a half megahertz coil and uh, figure out how to set that up, maybe so it doesn't melt over time, something like that. Try to push that at the higher voltage, because uh, I've only brought it to 30, and it was pretty decent there, so I should probably crank that up some more. I got the baby coil back on there. I'm just going to try to uh, put some glass on the breakout point. That does like that. Can't really pick that up too well. There we go. It's too bright. So that actually, um, with that breakout point with the glass like that, it probably will keep a lot of that heat away from the point. I probably could run that coil like that in particular for a pretty long time. Um, I don't know how long it'd be before the actual wire on the coil itself started to melt. Uh, but I think that's really not going to happen. It's going to be the former that would start warping due to all that heat. And eventually the whole thing's going to get out of whack. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 
the glass uh, makes it more ferocious. I mean, you can't see the color, but you know, it turns basically completely uh, yellow mixed with some purple in there, which you know looks pretty cool. So that's running at about uh, at about 150 watts, damn near, because I've moved the primary up just like very, very slightly. See, it's just sort of a part of a fuse. I don't know if you can see, but it's just part of a fuse I put on top where there's a little bitty bit of that glass poking out. It'll start burning that. See, so yeah, that's not bad. Uh, for that voltage so now I have to sort of kind of tune around with it to try to bring it up to uh, maybe 45 or higher so we'll see how that goes here's the coral I eventually want to run off that circuit maybe something like a primary like this primary is much longer if I just swap this out and leave the caps on it's just gonna be completely out of whack I'd have to adjust the driving frequency to the point where the primary circuit does sort of operate well minus the secondary but that's probably not going to be uh, anywhere in the realm that this guy needs to run in resonance. Before I do all of that, I'm just going to, you know, play around a little bit more with the other small coils I made just to get, you know, see what I can get out of those. Then when I'm done playing with those, I guess I'll go ahead and change the capacitor value around.